Hi everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm sharing my February book haul. I've bought and been sent a lot of amazing books this month and I can't wait to share them all with you. I hope I've remembered all of them. I think I'm going to have to start putting my new books in a separate place somehow to try to keep track of them but these should be all of them. I did go on a little shopping trip, well a book shopping trip in Hampstead at the very beginning of the month on February 1st and I bought a few books then and I vlogged about that whole trip so I'm not going to repeat those books um, in this haul, I'm just going to put a link to that video up here so if you want to watch um, that shopping trip and what books I bought on the very first day of the month then you can watch that video. But these are some new ones that I've bought since then. So first up, Wintering by Catherine May. This is a memoir, what's well, really a sort of blend of memoir and then also an examination into mental health and also into the science, literature and folklore of winter. And I found this an absolutely fascinating read. I'd read an article by Catherine May in the Simple Things magazine in that issue that came out in January and it mentioned that this book was going to be published in February in that article and I was quite intrigued by it. So I pre-ordered the book and I read it in a single afternoon. I absolutely loved it. It's about Catherine May's idea is is that we all go through our own wintering, much like winter comes around every cycle of the seasons in nature. For humans, we should also expect to have our own winters when life can get difficult or feel more barren or just be hard times. And what Catherine does in this memoir, she talks about her own wintering. So when she felt that life was frozen um, or when she was particularly struggling with mental health and she talks about one wintering of hers that she went through after her husband um, suffered from a burst appendix and the whole sort of nightmare that she went through at the hospital with him and then when she herself was struggling with a medical condition and wasn't quite sure what it was but was frightened that she might receive a cancer diagnosis. So those events put her into her own state of wintering but during that most recent period of her wintering she learned more resilience by studying nature and by looking at the transformations that the natural world um, go under in order to survive winter. So she very much drew on nature as an inspiration for surviving her own winterings and the writing is just so poetic in this I absolutely adored it and it gave me an awful lot to think about as well about my own times when I've um, wintered as she would say and it's a very hopeful book in the end too so yeah really really loved that one then I recently went to Daunt Books to pick up a few books that I was excited to get. This one is Parallel Lives by Phyllis Rose. It is published by Daunt Books, so it's been re-released. I really like this edition. I think this was originally published in the 70s or 80s, 1983. So my mum actually read this when she was young and she really, really liked it. So we were both excited that it's been republished by Daunt Books and I can't wait to read it. Um, it says five Victorian marriages and what this book does is it looks at um, five partnerships, five literary partnerships in Victorian society. So it looks at Charles Dickens's very unhappy marriage with his wife, I think it's called Catherine. Um, yes. Catherine Hogarth and Charles Dickens, it looks at Jane Welsh and Thomas Carlyle, Effie Gray and John Ruskin, 
Harriet Taylor and John Stuart Mill, and George Eliot and George Henry Lewis. So I'm really excited to read this. I think this will be a fascinating read. Then I also picked up from Daunt the guest list which is the new Lucy Foley mystery and I got the signed by the author Daunt Books edition so I was happy about that because I've started The Hunting Party and I'm really enjoying it and this sounds so good it's about a murder that takes place during a wedding and then a huge storm blows up so all the guests are trapped um, at this house at which the wedding is taking taking place and I mean what a nightmare that sounds but also just such a good premise for a novel I can't wait to read this then also from Daunt I'd read about this book so I was really happy to see it in Daunt and to pick it up it's called Out of Darkness Shining Light by Patina Gapper and this this just sounds really good it says the wise men of his age say that the explorer david livingstone blazed into the darkness of the african continent leaving a track of light behind where white men who followed him could tread in perfect safety but in patina gapper's radical novel it is those in the shadows of history his dark companions his faithful retinue on an epic funeral march across the african interior whose voices are resurrected with searing intensity halima his sharp-tongued cook and three of his most devoted servants jacob tuma and susie tell the tale of how they carried livingstone's corpse out of their native land unaware that he held the maps that would sow the seeds of brutal colonization this may be the story of buona do Dodi, the doctor, but it is also a revelatory celebration of the 69 men and women who bore his body aloft for 1,500 miles and their bravery, loyalty and love. So I think this just sounds fascinating and I can't wait to read this one as well. Um, then I was sent the final edition, this isn't actually out quite yet I think it's out a bit later this week actually and it's A Bite of the Apple by Lenny Goodings A Life with Books, Writers and Virago. I was really pleased to get this finished edition a little bit early because I've already interviewed Lenny Goodings about this book and this interview is going live next week next Tuesday on my podcast Teen Tattle and so I was really glad to get the finished copy of the book so I could photograph it ahead of time. This is such an incredible memoir. Lenny, Lenny Goodings um, has worked for most of her career with Virago Press, the feminist publishing company. She's now chair of Virago and she still is an editor. And this is just such an amazing examination of Virago Press, the history of the press. It, Lenny also looks at the rise of feminism and post-feminism and also what feminism now looks like today. She looks at many of the authors that Virago have published and her own particular friendships with amazing writers like Margaret Atwood and Maya Angelou. So this is just fascinating. If you're interested in publishing um, or just interested in literature in general, then this is such a great read. I love talking to Lenny too. I can't wait to share that podcast next week. Then I picked up this book, The Golden Key by Marion Womack. And this sounds like a great gothic story. I think it's set in Edwardian times. Yes, 1901, just after the death of Queen Victoria. And it's set in the Fenlands and all sorts of spooky things happen there. And a young woman, I think, is asked to solve some age-old mystery as to why, um, is it three daughters? Uh, so it says, Helena Walton Cisneros, known for her ability to find the lost and the displaced, is hired by the elusive Lady Matthews to solve a 20 old mystery, the disappearance of her three stepdaughters who vanished without a trace on the Norfolk, on the Norfolk Fens. 
Um, I'm really looking forward to reading this. I really enjoyed Wakenhurst by Michelle Paver, which was also set in very similar atmospheric Fenland, and that was also Edwardian times, and it was a real gothic thriller, and this sounds like it might be a similar sort of thing, so I'm hoping that I will enjoy this too. Then, as you know, I love a good cosy mystery, and this book, In the Crypt with a Candlestick by Daisy Wall, sounds really fun. Apparently it's a blend of Agatha Christie and P.G. Woodhouse, so it's a, in the style of a golden age mystery, but there's a lot of humour thrown in, which I could tell right from the beginning, because the first chapter is called The Toads of Toad Hall, Toad spelt T-O-D-E, and um, Lady Toad ends up um, well, her body is discovered in the family mausoleum, and it seems likely that she has been murdered. But I'm really curious to read this, as it sounds like a fun, light mystery, and apparently it's also, um, a bit of a humorous take on Pride, on Brideshead Revisited by Evelyn Wall, because Daisy Wall is Evelyn Wall's granddaughter. So that intrigues me too, so I'm looking forward to this one. Then I was sent this book, a proof copy of it, it's called Big Girl Small Town, um, I think it's, I think it's out in March, I know it's out, it was out on the 20th of February, um, I didn't ask for this book, it was just sent to me, and I'm not sure if it will quite be my cup of tea, but it sounds like it's a sort of YA book, it's set in Northern Ireland and it's about a young girl who is autistic and she's also, well she's just a little bit different from everyone else around her and I think it is meant to be quite funny but also a bit of a dark read. I don't know if it's entirely my thing but I might give it a try. Then I ordered from Girls Gone By Press, which is a lovely little independent publishing company that republishes a lot of classic old school stories and just classic children's literature. So I adore the Chalet School books by Eleanor and Brent Dyer, I grew up reading those, and that was how I first discovered Girls Gone By Press, because they've republished a lot of the Chalet School books, but also other books in that kind of vein. And they've recently republished this one, Highland Holiday by Jane Shaw. And um, you can sort of see the back, they've reproduced the original cover on these. I really like Jane Shaw's writing, this I think is set during World War Two, and it's about um, siblings who go to Scotland and have a holiday but also an adventure because they think they they think they've discovered a German spy in Scotland so it just sounds really fun and I'm looking forward to that. Then I ordered one more from Girls Gone By Press, this is Stepmother by Gwendolyn Courtney. Gwendolyn Courtney is another of my favourite writers from this sort of era, like pre-World War II of children's fiction. I love, I loved so many of her books growing up. This one was republished as Elizabeth of the Garrett Theatre, but the first edition was published as Stepmother. And again, it's about a young family whose mother has died and they get a new stepmother who they think is going to be like the wicked witch type character in all of the fairy tales, but actually she's lovely. So I'm really looking forward to rereading this story. And then I was sent this book, um, which I'm really looking forward to. It's actually out on the 11th of June. This is The Group by Laura Fiegel. It sounds really interesting. Um, it says, to marry or not to marry, to be a faithful wife or a wayward one, to have children or not have children, to feel guilty about our decisions or accept who we are and the pain we've caused to friends and lovers. How and when do we make the choices that shape our lives? Laura Fiegel's first novel, The Group, is a fiercely intelligent, revealing and engrossing, and engrossing story that takes its cue from Mary McCarthy's celebrated novel of the same name, but updates and twists it. Here are five female friends about to turn 40, all of whom are in different ways taking stock of their lives and seeing how it measures up 
to what they'd imagined. That sounds really fascinating. I haven't actually read Mary McCarthy's novel, so maybe I should before reading this. I'm really looking forward to getting to this, and I'm really thrilled that I got a bit of an early copy so I can read it and let you know what I think of it. Then I picked up um, this book in Waterstones, so I got the sort of red sprayed edging, that's a special Waterstones edition, and it's also signed by the author. This is The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. This is her first adult novel. Um, Kieran has written a lot of YA fiction already. Um, I've read some of it and I really liked it, like The Girl of Ink and Stars was a really good one. and. Yeah, she's been really successful, but I was really intrigued to get her first adult novel. And this is set, I think, in the 1600s. Yes, it's set, it starts off on Christmas Eve in 1617. And it's set on this little remote island off of Norway. And this awful storm um, blows up and all of the men are out fishing and they are all drowned. So the island becomes inhabited only by women. And I think a man comes from Scotland to um, sort of tr try and tame this group of women or something and he brings his young wife with him who is astonished to see so many women of such independence. But a group of women like that together has often been feared throughout history. So I think this looks at some real life events of what occurred um, on that island off Norway and the witch trials that started after that. Um, so it sounds really, really interesting. Some of my ancestors were Norwegian, so I'm always kind of intrigued by reading about Norway. So I'm really looking forward to getting to this one. Then next, I got this book, Dressed for War by Julie Summers, which I think is quite a recent publication. And it says the story of Vogue editor Audrey Withers from the Blitz to the, swing to the swinging 60s. So Audrey Withers took over Vogue during World War II, and this is all about how she managed to keep running the magazine um, whilst the London Blitz was going on. It sounds really fascinating. I love fashion. I love learning about the 1940s and London in that time. So I think this will be just my cup of tea. I'm really looking forward to getting to this one. And then finally, I was sent this book, um, which is called Find Your Girl Squad, Making and Keeping Friends Who Love You For You. This sounds really sweet. As a former primary school teacher, I am quite interested in children's books. This one I think is more aimed at sort of the middle school age of, of young girls. And it's all about how to navigate friendships in today's world where, you know, young people becoming more and more exposed to social media and a lot of the online as well as in-person bullying that can come from that. But this is a little book that really celebrates friendship and also female solidarity and how to be a good friend and also how to pick good friends. So I think this looks really interesting. I think it, I think, friendship as a topic and being able to be sort of a good citizen and be good to your friends and good to other people isn't always maybe addressed enough in school so I think that this is really nice to have this little guidebook almost to friendship for young girls so I'm looking forward to um, reading this and seeing what I think and I have some friends with um, girls about this sort of age so I think I'll probably pass it on to one of them afterwards and hopefully they'll appreciate it too. But yes so those are all of the books I've bought or been sent in February. I'd love to know what you've been buying in February, what books have been catching your eye. Do any of the books that I've shown you here catch your eye? Are you tempted to get any of them? Or have you read any of them already? Do let me know. But thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel, which you can do really easily by just cl clicking my face that pops up here. 
But thank you so much for watching and I'll be back again very soon with another video. Bye!